Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden, right here. We are gonna cover async await. Why async await? It makes you take a lot of promises, a lot of asynchronous operations around promises to make it look imperative. Imperative means do this, then this, then this or else this. It's a very controlled, very linear. You can wrap the whole thing in a try catch so it feels synchronous, but it's not really synchronous. Unit testing it is just like other promises, but the syntax is so different. I wanted to cover it here just so we know we have a bunch of API tests and show you one of the pitfalls that happens around it, where you do a bunch of them, makes your code slow, and you're like, what's going on? So we're gonna cover that tonight. <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Morgan. As we do more unit tests, we need to reduce how much we need to type. As this stuff gets more and more verbose, we need to work hard to abstract some of the stuff that's very obvious. And unit tests, especially around integration tests where you're covering many different inputs and outputs can get a bit long in a tooth in terms of size, not age. We're gonna call ping the data, which we haven't shown yet a lot. So let's just go ahead and make functions for them rather than having to manually pass this string every single time. So we'll do a let of ping. A let of get adventurers. Ad adventure. Learn to spell, bro. Adventure. That's close enough. And get steampunk. Now that we have those three variables, let's go ahead and make them. We'll add a couple more partials down here. The ping is a partial that takes the get URL and adds the API ping. So now we can just call ping. We don't have to pass it any parameters. Why are we doing this? Because I'm lazy. I'm a lazy coder. Where am I efficient? Or do I like abstracting my code away so no one can read it but me so I have job security? I'll let you decide. Parte equals adventurers. Equals, bro. Adventure. Man, I cannot spell tonight. Just kidding. Can't spell ever. Get steampunk. If I seem excited, it is because it's Friday. It's the weekend. We are doing Node and Restify on a Friday night rather than going clubbing because I'm a parent. <laughs> All righty, so line is just a tad. There we go. We can normally call get URL passing it a parameter, but instead we're just going to call ping, get adventures, and steampunk. So let's go ahead and copy pasta for the win here. We'll change this to ping and change this to ping. And these are actually not properties, bro, they're functions. Just because they have no parameters doesn't mean you, you can't call them. A lot easier to ring. If I call ping, it should be eventually be fulfilled as a promise. If I call ping, it should eventually give us a data pong back. Fantastic. So let's talk about this cray cray async away. What's really involved with all of that? We already have this function here where eventually, and what we're looking for is that whatever this value that it returns is has a property of data pong. But what if? What if, ladies and gentlemen, there was a way to do that on one line, make the code imperative again, so we didn't have to deal with this promise monad maybe insanity. Let's do it. Should get a pong back via async await. Now, async await is in node 7.6. Can I use Mukauchi async? So it's currently in Chrome, fantastic, and Opera of all things, but Safari, negative. If you're using an earlier version of 7, then you can use the harmony flag where you start node with. Otherwise, you should look into either Babel and or Webpack. So Babel JS, Babel JS. This will allow you to work, make it work all the way back to Node 4. So if you've ever used the Babel compiler. And Webpack makes using Babel easier. So check out Webpack 2 at the time of this video. It's pretty, pretty new, but they've got some wonderful docs, a lot of momentum behind it. And it's in the golden age of Webpack's history. So we're going to type the word async. Now, there are only two keywords in JavaScript that make functions at Cray. The first is async, and the second is if you were to put a star next to the function name. Can't really do that with arrow functions, but you can with async. Async allows me to treat this function as an imperative way of doing promises, aka I can use the await keyword anywhere I want to. Get a response from our promise, but instead of going ping, right, and we have it's a promise back, we're instead going to get the actual response by using await. What this will do is pause this function and this response will actually equal whatever the then spits out. If dot catch is fired on error, instead this will throw a normal error. So we normally have to wrap this in a try catch, right? And treat it as a normal piece of code. Here is the good news that you don't have to worry about. And that is that Mocha handles this really well already with exceptions. So you can just treat it like this. People have made wrappers for you, but you don't really need that. Now if we call ping, we can go 
Response.data should equal Paul. The above here and this are mostly equivalent. Notice there's no done and there's no return value of the promise. We're just treating it like regular imperative code. However, we can make it even more one liner. If you want to see likes everything on one line, you are more than welcome to. I'm not going to judge you. I'm just jealous. Not read the code, but you could get rid of this instead, right? We'll leave this up here to see our reference. And if we wrap it in this parenthesis, it actually resolves the value here. Then we can go data should equal Pong. However, that's a bit. Uh, Warning. Warning. Approaching full list. Hard to read, ladies and gentlemen. Either one, I don't care. You can rerun NPM test. And if you get stuff like this, it's because it doesn't know what the heck the async keyword is. It depends on what you're using. If you're using a browser or old versions of Node, you may or may not get a syntax error. Sometimes is lint will choke on this. It's NVM LS, it'll tell you which version you're using. Now we're gonna run integration and you'll see that we got our ping back normally with the normal promise using chai is promised and using the standard built-in javascript async await functionality that's all great but here is a downfall of using async await that i think you all should be aware of it get all should be fine via await so we're going to call every single api we have exposed we have two rest api calls one of which takes two parameters so async function we are now allowed to use the await keyword so const pong await ping wait for ping get a result back whatever comes out of the dot then put it right here if it's a catch just go ahead and throw we're going to get the party back from get adventurers and we're going to get a crew from right get sync punk if you like. We're gonna use Lodash to verify that all our objects, all these things that we got back are in fact objects because they're all supposed to have a result of true and the data is supposed to either up here equal Pong, down here it's supposed to equal an array and down here it's supposed to equal array. It's just what's in the array differs. Yo, Pong, party and crew are all three of these things an object. Give it a function, say look, pass each one of these result function things, these Pong, party and crew to O and then if this function returns true is object O, then we're good. If every single one of these is an object, then we're legit, which for the most part means every single API did in fact respond. So let's align that a bit and say all our objects should be true. And as you can see, we got all should be fine via await. These are all good, but here is kind of an issue. You see this creeping up right here? Occasionally, it'll be slow. Yeah, so sometimes you're gonna get a warning that you're approaching the 50 to 100 millisecond barrier. You see yellow, that's Mocha saying that, you know, anywhere 35 and above to about 100 milliseconds is slow. Once you get to 100 and above, that's considered pretty slow for JavaScript. Given the fact that we're calling it three REST APIs, what I believe is reasonable, but the actual unit test is not reasonable. Unit tests tend to get a lot longer for this. And the reason for this is that each one of these is waiting for the next. So if you were to think of this in promise terms, think if you were going the old school, it would return a promise, so we'll return ping, then we get the result, and is object, results should be true, then we return get adventurers, two more times, get steampunk, and then assert that this is good and we're done. Do you really need to wait for all these promises to go in order? No, it's a stateless node server and we wanna verify and test that anyway. So there's no reason why these all can't run at the exact same time and just test the end results. We don't care out of the race who wins, we just wanna test all the results at the same time in an array. So we will copy paste this, but we're gonna get rid of the async keyword and do it old school. Show you that a wait is not always a friend if you're doing concurrent promises where you're trying to do them all at once. And also this is a good test to do. You want to run a bunch of things at once to make sure that your server is in fact stateless if you're doing API stuff. We're going to return the promise all and basically put in all our functions, our ping, our get adventurers, our get steampunk, if we know how to spell. Then get the results. Do the exact same assertion, except instead of this, we're just going to take the results because we already got them. Ray. And then so we turn it, we do an assertion. We don't have to worry about calling done. If this were to fail and throw an error, then Mocha would catch that error via the dot catch. Rerun our integration test. 
And you'll notice that this one is still slow, but this one's uber fast because they have three API calls right here going all at the same time. A wait isn't always your friend. You only want to do this if you have to have exact order. So just be aware of that speed problem. Hope that was helpful. Again, my name is Jesse Warden. You got any other questions, hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. See you tomorrow.